Welcome at Wageningen Food Safety Research, the largest laboratory in the food safety domain in the Netherlands. We perform independent research with state-of-the-art facilities and we mainly work for national and international governments. We are located on Wageningen campus and are embedded within Wageningen University and Research, the number one university in the world for agricultural sciences. This facilitates collaboration with renowned experts from many fields of research and in that way we truly have an impact for society. My name is Bjorn Berense and it is my pleasure to give you a virtual tour through our facilities. Let's start the tour where sample analysis begins, sample reception and registration. Please follow me. This is the sample reception area and all samples are received and registered here. As a matter of fact, we are lucky. One of the daily sample deliveries from the Netherlands Food and Consumer Product Safety Authority is just arriving. The majority of samples are food products or animal feed, but also other materials like environmental samples and food contact materials are analyzed. Samples can be for routine monitoring, but can also originate from an incident. For instance, if someone became severely ill after food intake. Sample reception, registration and preparation are carried out according to strict protocols and a tra track and trace system is used to keep track of each individual sample. Afterwards, samples are usually directly transported to the relevant laboratory. Let me take you there. We have arrived at one of our state-of-the-art LCMS laboratories. Besides our work on veterinary medicines, also part of our European reference laboratory task for mycotoxins and plant toxins is carried out here. Most instruments you see are triple quad MS instruments that are used for targeted analysis of very low concentrations of substances. With these instruments, you will only detect the substances a priori programmed. You will also find some high-resolution MS instruments that are specifically being used for broad screening of all sorts of substances and for detection and identification of unexpected compounds. With these instruments, no a priori programming is required. Therefore, huge amounts of data are produced and databases, statistics or big data analysis is used for data evaluation. And this is our GCMS laboratory, please follow me. This room is equipped with GCMS instruments used for the residue analysis of apolar contaminants such as pesticides. We also have high resolution magnetic sector instruments for dioxin and PCB analysis to be able to detect the low concentrations required. An instrument, mainly used for our European reference laboratory tasks of hormones, is the GC isotope ratio MS. With this, we are able to distinguish synthetic and naturally produced substances, for instance testosterone and estradiol. This instrument can also be used to determine the origin of products to detect fraud. Talking about food fraud, we have a whole team working on that issue. Let's visit that laboratory now. As you can imagine, food fraud has been around for many centuries and has even been included in proverbs such as adding water to wine. Wageningen Food Safety Research investigates fraud with food, feed and fertilizers. To do this, the composition of products is analyzed and compared to what is mentioned on the packaging. Also, we use analytical fingerprints in combination with statistics to distinguish an authentic product from a fraudulent product. For instance, we have methods operational to check for correct labeling of all sorts of oils. Or this chocolate. It is said to be from Ecuador, but is that true? Parts of the food fraud research is also done by DNA analysis. We develop methods to be able to determine the animal species present in a product. For instance, is minced meat beef or horse meat? 
or mixture. Considering DNA detection, we also determine the potential food and feed risks of new genetic technologies applied to food producing organisms, such as plants, microorganisms and animals. Also, we determine if genetically modified organisms or allergens have been incorporated in a product. The methods used can be lab-based or used for fast on-site detection and identification. DNA techniques are also applied in our microbiological department. That will be our next stop. Here we develop the latest methods and techniques to monitor microbiological food safety. You've probably heard about infections caused by salmonella in poultry or norovirus on raw vegetables or in shellfish. Here we carry out the classical microbiology but also apply the latest techniques to, for instance, carry out source detection. Next to PCR, we more and more use whole genome sequencing. Previously, I was talking about fast and on-site tests. I suggest it is time to have a look at the facilities that are specialized in developing such tests. Fast and easy tests can accelerate decision. That is the philosophy of the team that is developing such tests. Quick tests can be laboratory based such as the microbiological screening test. An advantage is that you can visually assess the test result. Other tests are applicable on site, like test strips. Here is a nice example, and this test strip can measure allergens in food products. We can produce custom designed strip tests, for instance with this 3D printer. It is currently printing a simple test device, but we've got other toys for quick analysis. For instance, a mobile GCMS. Have you ever seen such a small mass spectrometer? And let me introduce you to our drone facilities. One is just about to take off outside. Let me grab a coat. We are now behind a building and you can see the drone in the back. The drone is equipped with 14 electrochemical sensors that are positioned underneath it. These can collect real-time data during the drone flight. The electrochemical sensors can measure different gases in the air. Via a real-time Wi-Fi connection, the data is collected at a ground station. We currently use the sensors for monitoring harmful gases in the air, for instance in case of a fire. In other cases, we use the combined data for smell determination. So this is our microscopy laboratory, please come in. Besides all the high-end techniques, the more traditional techniques are still indispensable for our work. Visual inspection, including microscopy, focuses on the detection of biologic and physical hazards, such as animal byproducts, packaging material, toxic seeds or fungi in, for instance, animal feed. For this purpose, we have a unique library of over 6,000 reference materials of all sorts of seeds and grains. Wageningen of Food Safety Research operates as a crisis organization, which means that experts are available 24-7 to advise government agencies like the Ministry of Agriculture, Nature and Food Quality in case of a food safety incident. This also applies when alarming observations are done in one of our emergency networks, such as radiation, or in case of an environmental incident, such as a major fire. For instance, in case of a fire, we advise about whether cows can safely go outside or whether a certain crop can be safely harvested. Advice is usually supported by measurement data and therefore the laboratory is directly activated to quickly perform analysis for hazardous substances that may have been released during the fire, such as dioxins, polyaromatic hydrocarbons and heavy metals. Because results are needed quickly, the system is arranged in such a way that laboratory experts can start measurements within two hours at any given time. Music 
Oh, and it's good to realize that not all of our work is done in a laboratory. These are our desk workers, for instance. They work on enormous amounts of data. They use big data techniques and artificial intelligence to, for instance, identify and predict new risks in the food chain. And it's important to know that they look at the entire chain, from production to transport and storage. So this is our ML1 laboratory, and this allows us to work with genetically modified organisms. For higher risk work, we even have an ML2 laboratory. Finally, I would like to introduce you to our work on alternatives for animal testing. Potential hazards of food components and additives are classically tested in animal models. However, animal studies are not always predictive for human outcomes, they can be costly and there are ethical concerns. We are developing a toolbox consisting of in vitro cell based tests that simulate specific functions of organs in the human body. We also use computer-based models to predict the effects of a compound in the human body. Outcomes of in vitro tests can be used to predict the absorption, distribution, metabolism and excretion of a substance in the human body. By using these methods, we aim to reduce and ultimately replace animal testing. Well, this brings us at the end of the tour. And I'm quite sure that you will now look differently at your food, knowing what we do to assure it is safe. I hope you've enjoyed this tour, and I would love to welcome you in person in our facility someday soon. Thank you very much. <laughs>